we'll, we'll practice a little bit now. D just ask you to be very quiet, no whispering, okay? Uh, but but I, I, tonight I want two, two that went to buy to speak, but, but for now, I really ask Nick, uh, Nick Vallon, if you would come forward and just share his, his, his experience. Um, I don't want to say any, anything more. I'll let him share. But, but, uh, but, 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 but please, please give Nick your attention. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm Nick, and um, tonight I'm going to be completely real with you guys. Um, these past few months, I've been really struggling to believe in God. I find it really hard to believe in something that I can't see. And um, I've been constantly questioning like, how my atheist friends at school can seem so happy and they don't even have God in their lives. And then there's me and um, I try to pray to God and I just feel nothing. <clears throat> I'd also wonder about how there can be so many religions, and every single religion thinks that they're the one true religion. It just, it didn't make sense. Like, how, how do I know that this is the true religion? So, a few weeks ago, Patrick called me out, and he asked me to go on this retreat called Abide. And um, at first, I really didn't want to go. Um, I thought it would be a waste of my time. I wasn't really excited. I thought it would be boring. but. I didn't want to let Patrick down, so I said, all right, I'll go. <clears throat> so fast forward to last Friday night. We, uh, we got to Cincinnati, where the retreat was held. And um, that night we had a talk, we had adoration. And it was good, but I didn't really feel anything. <clears throat> so the next day, we wake up, we have morning prayer, and we eat breakfast and everything. And then that afternoon was kind of a turning point for me. Um, I did something that, I, that I've never done before. Um, we went out into the streets of Cincinnati, and we basically went door to door asking the residents for um, donations of uh, canned food to give to the homeless and the poor. And um, so this particular house I went to, uh, I went up there, and the first thing that I saw before I even got to the front porch was this pit bull. Uh, behind the door and it was barking at me and I went up and every time I tried to knock it would like jump at my hand like it was gonna bite it so it, it was just scaring the mess out of me but uh, I finally got the courage to knock and this guy comes to the door and he is just jacked <laughs> he was so fit he could probably destroy me if we got in a fight so I was really intimidated but um, I introduced myself say I'm um, with St. Vincent de Paul and uh, we're collecting canned foods. So he brings out a few cans and, um, and then I ask him, um, do you have any special intentions you'd like me to pray for? And he said, yeah, uh, my marriage. So I was like, all right, let's start praying. So I start praying over him and uh, the words are just flowing out. It was, it was really good. And when I'm done, he just reaches out his hand, he shakes my hand, he looks me in the eye, and he says, thank you. And I could tell his voice was kind of choked up and his eyes were about to tear up. And, uh, and then he said, like, come here, piggy. And he took his pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, just seeing that, that guy just um, being brought to tears almost, it really cut me deep. And um, I don't know, I, it just stuck in my mind ever since. So, Later that night, we had adoration round two, and I knew something had to change. Um, and I knew I couldn't do it by myself. So I went to the back, and I got with the prayer team, and they really hooked me up. Um, they started praying over me. I told them everything that was going on in my life, how I've been struggling to have faith. And um, they talked to me about it, and we figured out that I can't do this on my own they're not gonna restore my faith. The only person who can really restore my faith is Jesus. So they brought me to the front of the room and had me kneel down basically within arm's length of monsters. So I knelt down and um, I don't know what it was, but suddenly I, I just felt so at peace. And it was like nothing I've ever felt before. 
<clears throat> and um, I was praying so hard, and they were praying over me. And I just had this realization that nothing else matters besides Jesus. Like, this is the one true religion, the only religion with a God so present as Jesus in the Eucharist. And I, I thought about my atheist friends and how they may look happy on the outside, but inside there's only darkness. And there's this void, this empty space in their heart that can only be filled by God. And I also thought about that man that I met today, or that day. And um, I, I thought about something that my prayer team said. They said that just that simple action could have changed that guy's life. It could have saved him from divorce, and it could have even saved his life. I'll never know how serious his situation was, but there's a possibility he could have even been thinking about suicide. And um, just dwelling on that and just praying about it, I, it kind of it changed my life. <clears throat> I also felt this, um, this happiness and this joy that I've never felt before. I don't know where it came from, but I just, I was laughing almost. I was like smiling, and apparently it's a thing. It's called laughing in the spirit, and it happened. <laughs> but it was crazy, and I, I can't deny that I felt God that night. It really did change my life. <clears throat> so feeling that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, um, I, just, I really desire that for all of you guys to feel, because um, there's nothing like it. And um, I really want to encourage you guys to go on this spring retreat that's coming up, because I, f I just have a feeling that there's going to be a lot more of the Holy Spirit being out poured. <clears throat> so, um, especially if you're struggling in your faith, if you're struggling to believe, and you probably won't want to come on this retreat, because I know I didn't want to go on that one, but I really encourage you to get signed up and go on it, because looking back, going on that retreat was the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> That's all. Thank you, thank you, Nick. Uh, I love those pants. Yeah, <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to give Xavier a chance. He also, was on the Biden retreat. Uh, keep, keep Xavier in, in your prayers as well. Public knowledge, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so he's going to be traveling to China uh, sh shortly to, to pick up pick up his baby brother. So, uh, uh, so, so, so that's just a couple days. So, so keep him in your prayers, but. Uh, but, but with, with that, you can imagine he's, he's gone through uh, uh, big things in our moment and the retreat. So, Xavier, uh, let's, let's hear from Xavier. Uh, so, for those of you who haven't met me, I'm Xavier, and um, I'm just going to give some real talk on how God has just touched my life. Um, Specifically through this weekend on the Abide Retreat. So, um, just a little backstory. Like, um, the past couple years, I've just experienced a lot of dryness with my faith. Um, you know, just from just kind of being in mass and not really feeling anything to coming to youth group and still not feeling anything, and just kind of retreats and just feeling dry. Um, I think it's really taken a toll on my faith. And um, I just really didn't feel like I was a child of God, you know, and just for the longest time. And like, I just wasn't good enough to be loved just in general. There was a lot of pain and hurt and I couldn't really see God's hand in my life. <clears throat> um, but God kind of took a hold of me and at the beginning of this year, I just started to pray again. I mean, it wasn't much, but I had, I had the will to. And I actually felt God was just kind of calling me more um, to just be a leader, to just, um, just to better myself, just step out of just kind of my comfort zone. And um, the, uh, the opportunity came around um, for this retreat. I heard about it, so I didn't know how. But automatically, I just kind of like convinced myself it wasn't for me. But just later that week, for some reason, I just felt like like I just needed to be on that. And I've never felt that before, like for any retreat. So I just kind of felt it was odd. But, but I just kind of, I wanted to, it was on my mind. I was still um, really hesitant, so I decided to talk to Patrick about it. And um, just in short, he just said, 
or he just asked me, you know, like, do you want to give yourself over to God? And I thought about it, and I said yes, and um, I went on the retreat. Now, the first night um, in praise and worship, everybody was getting their Jesus on and stuff, and I was just like, <laughs> I was just, um, just there praying that God would just kind of take this retreat and just kind of work with me, you know, use that to just really work in me. And I just pray just that God would take all this, all this stuff that's been going on, just all this brokenness and all the pain and everything, you know what I'm saying? Just take that and just kind of do away with it. Um, and I just knew that just after thinking about my little talk to Patrick, that that little second that I, that I hesitated to say yes, I'm willing to give myself to God, was my problem. You know, that I needed to take action and just kind of take a step in faith to just give myself over to God and just convince myself that there wasn't any fear or, you know, I didn't need to be afraid, that I just needed to trust. And I just, um, I just prayed that God would give me um, just strength and that he would just lead me to his love because I knew um, that I couldn't do it on my own. Like, that was um, part of the talks, um, you know, that we heard that day. And, um, and finally, I just prayed that the Holy Spirit would just enter me because just that night, you know, everybody, like I said, was just um, praising out and just kind of wilding out and stuff. And I just, like, could feel just the presence of the Holy Spirit in there. And I kind of knew that I wanted that, you know, because there was just such a peace towards the end of it. And, um, and as the night came to a close, you know, it was just, um, I was just kind of reflecting on all that. Um, the next day, um, it was really cool. Uh, we went, like Nick said, had like a food drive and um, met a lot of cool people. And it was really cool just to, just to kind of take time just to pray with them. And I thought that was, like that was really powerful for me like it was, that was just a, like such a cool experience and just the people were just so thankful. And, um, I thought that was amazing. And um, the talks were all really good. You know, I internalized those and everything. And um, I felt that was just, like all those talks just kind of really spoke to me. Um, as evening came, we uh, went back into praise and worship. And that night, I thought about what I prayed about the following day. And I just knew that I was just going to give myself all to God, just in that moment. Just, and I just kept praying, you know, um, just called on the Holy Spirit. Like, I just didn't care. It's just the night went on. I just kept praying and praying. And just I thank God just for me being there because I just felt such a joy and peace. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just being there. And I just kept praying out loud. And it just, the joy that I felt just kept going. And it was just so amazing. It was so powerful. And um, a benediction, when um, the priest raised the mantra and so whatever, um, I just couldn't take my eyes off it. And it was just, I just felt like such a peace just because, I mean, there was just so much emotion around the room. And I could just feel like a presence. And I just knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I, and I just couldn't take my eyes off it. And as he just walked down the aisle, I still couldn't take, take my eyes off it. It was just... It was just such a powerful presence that was there. And I just really, I just failed to recognize that just in other retreats and just other opportunities like that. You know, I felt like because I prayed and I gave myself to God and I trusted him, he opened me up and just gave me the opportunity to really, um, to just feel the goodness of God and that he cares and that he's for me and that he can do great things for me. Because this isn't, you know, this is just, this is a testimony. There's sure to be a lot more, you know, um, just in life and everything. It just, it never stops, you know. And um, just, just to close, i just like to thank everybody that was there on the about retreat with me. Um, just really like to thank, you know, Nick, Becca, um, Jude, just kind of specifically, I guess. I'm um, just everybody in my small group. Um, it was just such a great experience and um i don't know the feeling that i had there was just something like i've never had before and i feel it really did change my life and my spiritual life it just it was just so powerful and and i felt it's because i was open 
if um, if any of you guys are open to that, I mean, the spring retreat's coming up. That's where you should start. And um, you can just have just just a time, just you and Jesus. Like, just think of it like that. You know, you should want it just because of that, just because it's God. And that's that's what it all comes down to. It's just you and God. And it's just there's a power there. If you just recognize that it's just that, just in its purest form, he'll come into you. And if you ask, and if you have the will, he'll get it for you. Um, yeah, and just just to close, if God can work in a little club like me, there's no <laughs> question what he can do for you guys. So, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Everybody's experience is, is, is different. So special thanks to, to Nick and Xavier for just be, be, being willing to share what's very deep and personal. So, so it is with, with, your, with your own Lenten journeys. Now, I, I'm, I am glad that Xavier said, uh,